So, you know, we, we've laid out this mystery for you, which is that where does this two-string method come from? And the answer is at the very top of Java's object hierarchy. So, you know, if you think about it, think about a family tree, right? Like that's kind of what we've established here. We have these parent-child relationships that are created using the extends keyword. The class that does the extending is the child of the class that it extends. Its parent might be the child of some other class. And so if you think about it, starting with any class in Java, if we follow the extend, so let's say that, you know, freshman extends student. Okay, so we go to student. Student extends person, so we go to person. Um, person doesn't extend anything, but we can go still one step further. And that's because at the top of object, of Java's sort of object family, right? The family of classes that we're able to establish now using these extends keyword um, to create these relationships. You might think it's sort of like the human family. Like if you go all the way back, there's some original human ancestor and it's probably not that simple, but in Java it's that simple because it's a computer language rather than a real messy real world biological system. So. At the top of all of this is a single class called capital O object. And, you know, again, a little bit of confusion there because when we talk about lowercase object, we're talking about an instance of a class. When we talk about capital O object, and I'll try to call it capital O object so we don't get ourselves confused, what we're talking about is the class that represents, as the Java doc puts it, the root of the class hierarchy. This is every class in Java's ultimate ancestor. So if you climb that class hierarchy, like I was saying, and you go from one class to what it extends, what it extends, eventually you get to a class that doesn't extend another class. Now that's not the root, because when we omit the extends keyword, what we're actually doing is extending capital O object. And so if you follow that object hierarchy up and up and up, and tomorrow I'll show you some pictures of this, but if you follow that and follow that and follow that, for every single class in the Java programming language, you will arrive at this class called capital O object. Now, just a brief aside, this is not true for the primitive types. They're off in their own universe. They're not objects, but for everything in Java that's an object, and that's everything that is not one of those eight primitive types. So any type in Java that's not int, short, long, byte, double, float, care, and boolean, uh, it's an object and its ultimate parent, parent is capital object. Now, because objects inherit state and behavior from their ancestors. That means that whatever capital object defines or declares is available to every single object in the Java programming language, all of them, every single one. And so this is a somewhat important object or class for us to understand. For the purposes of this course, there are three important methods that we are going to look at. So again, if you look at this, you can see that object provides a small number of methods, right? There's maybe, I don't know, 12. Many of these are not going to concern us, um, but there are three that we are going to care about. The first one is equals. And we're actually gonna talk about this in more detail uh, later. Uh, this allows us to establish the two instances of an object or different types of objects are the same. Uh, we've been using this before when we compared strings for equality, and now we're going to actually uh, show you how to use this to define what it means for instances of your own classes to be equal to each other. So that's one method that every class inherits from capital object. Another one is, ta-da, two string. Every Java object can be printed because every Java object has a two string method. And when you pass an object to system.out.println, how does it convert it to a string? It calls the two string method. Now the default two string method is not that useful. It prints a little bit of the information about the object, but we can usually define our own two string method that is much more useful. And we'll show you how to do that. Uh, the last one here is called hash code. And this comes into play much farther downstream when we talk a little bit about hash tables and maps. And this is what we'll use at that point. But these are three methods that every single Java object will have. Now again, keep in mind, every single Java object is guaranteed to have all of these methods because every single Java class in some way, whether directly or indirectly, extends capital O object. You can override these methods and provide your own implementations, but you can't get rid of them. If you create a class in Java, it's gonna have these methods. You can choose to cause them to behave in different ways, um, but you can't 
remove them from your class. This class is going to have these methods. So this is capital object, the root of the Java class hierarchy. Every, you know, the terminology they're using here is super class, so, or sort of same as ancestor. So every class in Java has object in its hierarchy. So if I started any class and I go up through extends, climb in the class hierarchy, the final destination is always capital O object. And one other thing to point out, that means the capital o object is the only object in Java's class hierarchy that it does not have a parent. 